Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Aya Neo Retro Mini PC AM01S. There's definitely a few things here that make this mini PC stand out in the crowd. And uh, obviously with a name like Retro Mini, they had to go with kind of a retro inspired design. So we've got a Mac style design. I personally love what they've done here. And last year, Aya Neo released the AM01 without all of the features that we're going to see on this unit here. Now, obviously, we've got a very small form factor. And again, I mean, that retro design does look really good. But the main claim to fame is the flip up screen. And we've seen a couple mini PCs with screens built in, but most of the time it's like proprietary software. We can only do a few things with it. This screen is actually working as a secondary display. And Aya Neo has also included their Aya space, which actually allows us to kind of view a performance monitor at a glance. You can set up a weather station if you want to. But I'm really glad that they set this up as a second display. That way we don't need any proprietary applications to get something up and going on this. Let's say you wanted to run Spotify on this second screen. It's totally possible to do so. And you've got full access to it with the mouse. Up front here, we also have this little cover plate. And once we remove it, we've got access to a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and four USB ports. Inside of the box, along with the AM01S, I also got a couple screwdrivers here so we can easily access the internals and upgrade the storage. A 120 watt power supply, which just happens to be one of the newer small form factor power supplies. Six foot HDMI cable, and we've got these little magnetic attachments so you can kind of customize right up top. When it comes to I.O., up front here, like we saw, we have that removable panel, and this is going to give us access to that audio jack and four USB 3.2 ports. And around back, we've got our power input, two full-size HDMI ports. We get one USB 4 port running at a 40 gig protocol and one USB-C 3.2. Plus, we've got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, a USB 2.0 port, and another USB 3.2 port. So we've got a lot of I.O. on this mini machine for sure. IMEO is going to be offering this with a couple different APU variants, so you could go with something like an 8845HS if you want to, or you could go all the way up to the AMD Ryzen AI9HX370. That's what we have here. This is going to be their highest end model for the AM01S. And with this, we have 12 cores, 24 threads based on Zen 5, a base clock of 2 gigahertz, and a max clock of 5.1. Got that 16CU Radeon 890M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 3.5 and it will clock up to 2900 megahertz. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 to this. I've got 32 gigs installed with this. The HX370 model has one M.2 SSD slot, good up to an eight terabyte drive, and one 2230 M.2 slot. You can add more storage over there if you want to. We've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. And out of the box, this is running Windows 11 with Aya Space installed. And as soon as we boot it up, Aya Space is going to start. We'll get our performance monitor over on that secondary screen, as you can see here. But we can disable that if we want to. And we've got full access to that other screen with our mouse and keyboard. So you can see I'm moving around over here. This is set up so it's actually a second screen connected to this mini PC. If we go into our display settings, you can see... Number one is going to be my big screen. Number two is going to be that smaller screen. And from Aya Space, we can disable that performance monitor if we want to. So from Aya Space, if we go over to our settings, sub screen, and from here, we've got a bunch of different settings that we can use with that secondary display. You can set it up to show the weather if you want to. Obviously, we're showing that uh, performance monitor right now, which is my favorite thing to do with this. We've also got full brightness control directly from within Aya Space for that second screen. So we can control that independently. And at the very top, if I uncheck this box, you'll see it looks just like Windows Desktop. You can access your quick menu from here. You can run secondary apps on that screen. Now, obviously, it's a lot smaller than, you know, a monitor would be. But for lighter, easy to use apps like, let's say, Ida64, you could run them over there for sure. And uh, one thing that I've been doing is actually using Wallpaper Engine. That way I've got dual wallpapers sitting over here, but when I start up a game, I can always open up Aya Space and set it up as my performance monitor at any time I want. Aya Space also has a really nice game launcher built in that'll automatically download some box art for you, get you that metadata you need. And we've got full control over this HX370. So we can adjust the TDP directly from here. We can change the governor. 
And since this is a mini PC, we don't have to worry about battery power. I've actually just been sticking at 65 watts with it, so we can go directly up there, and it's working very, very well. First thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. Geekbench 6, coming in with a single core of 2,896. Multi, 14,915. I mean, falling right in line with other HX370 powered devices that we've tested here at this kind of wattage. I also ran 3D Mark Time Spy, and we got a total score of 3,753. Our graphics score up there at 3,367, and a little over 10,000 on the CPU. So yeah, I mean, for a little APU-powered device, this thing's trucking right along. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to get into some gaming. Cyberpunk 2077 1080 high settings with FSR frame gen. We're just not going to do uh, 1080 high over 60 without any frame gen on this system. But with it enabled, we're over 80 FPS on average, and it does feel really good on the HX370 for sure. Afterburner is up in the top left hand corner. You can see, I mean, we're right there at 54 watts. We can take it all the way up to 65, but while we're gaming, it kind of seems to be just right there at around 54. Forza Horizon 5, 1080, medium settings with no FSR. We're over 100 FPS on average, and I knew we'd see good performance with it, very well optimized. And to tell you the truth, I mean, we don't need to be at 65 watts, or in this case, you know, pulling 54. Around 40 watts, we're going to see around the same kind of performance here with this game. Here's Marvel Rivals. We're at 1080 medium with FSR set to balanced, and I did see this during battle dip under 60. I was really hoping it was gonna hold steady, but uh, we still have frame gen that we could access if you want to. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it if I'm doing online multiplayer games, but it's there in case you need a little more out of it. The last one I wanted to go with, at least for this video, was Borderlands 4, and with this game it's just really hard on any iGPU. I had to take it down to low 1080 with frame gen on, and even then we just can't lock it down at 60. Dropping it down to 900p makes for a much better playable experience, over 70 on average, but I wanted to see what it would do at 1080, and it, I mean it's right there on the edge. With frame gen on, every once in a while on the sides there where I got that shield going, you can actually see a little bit of ghosting with the uh, frame generation. It's been happening a lot with this game, and I was hoping by now that Gearbox would have thrown out a few optimizations for these lower end chips. Last thing I wanted to talk about here was total system power consumption from the wall, because this could be important to some people, you know, who live in areas that have high energy costs. In performance mode, or otherwise up to 65 watts from IS space, and the screen on, idle, this thing is only pulling around 10 watts in total, while gaming at 1080, up to 72 watts, and the maximum I recorded while doing all of my tests was 97 watts in total from the wall. Comes to that 120 watt power supply, and we're going to be fine with that, that's more of an extreme test there at 97 watts. Overall, I think we're seeing some great performance out of the new AM01S with that HX370. And keep in mind, they do offer one with an 8000 series. The iGPU there isn't going to really keep up with what we've got here because we've got that 16 compute unit iGPU with the HX370. This is going to be the best one that you can get from them right now. I also personally love the overall design here. Uh, having that screen with a performance monitor is pretty cool. It's something that you could glance down at because most of the time with a mini PC, I mean, this is gonna be sitting beside your monitor anyway. We've also got tons of IO. And one thing I'd love to do with this is actually install SteamOS on it. So we've got SteamOS 3.8 that can now boot up on the HX370. With this at 65 watts in SteamOS, I think we'd see some absolutely amazing performance but we would be kind of sacrificing the built-in screen because at the time of making this, there's really no way to run two separate screens in SteamOS, at least when you're in big picture or gaming mode. Either way, if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know in the comments below and it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look at the IMEO AM01S. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave links to their official website in the description below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.